And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 2017 YugiTuber Grand Championship. In this match, we have Davinator1212 going to be playing Wind Witch Harpies going up against Heisenwolf and his Fluffles. And with us for this electrifying commentary, we have the one, the only, What's Good YouTube, House of Champs! What's Good YouTube? And we are here watching... Harpies in 2K17. <laughs> they did make a surprise Worlds appearance before, yeah. I remember. So they're definitely not too far behind on the scene, even though we haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> I've, I saw a meme recently that was like, when your diagram gets hunting grounded. <laughs> that oh that relevant God. once a little spell and trap destruction that can activate during your uh, opponent's turn, I believe, when if there's a summon. Yeah, leave it to leave it to Dave to play. I, I don't even know anymore. Like Dave, you got to give him credit for this tournament. He's been playing some really fun decks. I like the lewd harpy background with Simo peeking out behind. I know, too. right? I <laughs> Dave has a lot of fun. So we see Toy so Bender coming down for Heisenwolf. Yeah, Fluffle's definitely going to be uh, popping off when you have Toy Benders already going to grave so soon. Yeah. Uh, whiffs on the effect, but that doesn't matter too much here. Yeah, he got the pitch off the other Toy Benders. That's really all that matters at this point. <laughs> I, I, I think there's a little bit of a fright for screw job lately, too, with the card pool. Uh, yeah. No so fright that, for patchwork, John. How do you yeah, feel about that? <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I'm not the biggest Fluffle fan, fright for fan, but I think it's it's deserved for the archetype. Like, you should get to play it before Link format comes out. So uh, there's a couple more sets that could come out before the WCQ. I know DZF was actually wanting to play it before the WCQ. Right. It's just so... It sucks to see friends that wanted to do something with it. Like, Sam Cox might have considered it for the WCQ as well. Just so many people that love that deck and wanted to have a good time with it at the biggest event. Yeah. So what's really cool is, is that uh, we saw Dark Hole come down from Heisenwolf and and Davinator actually chained his Swallow's Nest to get uh, Harpy Harpist so that it was going to die to the Dark Hole. So he gets its Skarm-like effect uh, in the in the end phase. So he's going to get, I guess, some advantage. He takes like a little bit of a minus, but I guess it allows him to get uh, whatever he needs out of his deck. I mean, Yeah, he, he chose to destroy the Hunting Ground over the Toy Vendor. Right, which is, um, which is a lot better because destroying the Toy Vendor does absolutely nothing for him. <laughs> There's, oh, there's wow, a, another uh, toy vendor. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's already a wolf on field, so I feel like this might be the final turn of this duel. Yeah, but... oh, he's got another yeah. fusion, too. <laughs> yeah, this is this is not going to look good for Davinator. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hate to see this kind of thing happen, but at least there's that nice background. I'm guessing this is Davinator's background. This is definitely his background, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he added the Simo peeking through, <laughs> covered with one eye, just smiling. Oh man, so yeah, so we get the tiger down and the wolf, and uh, yeah, I, I think this is uh, this is pretty much it. We call this a wrap. Yeah, <laughs> where we come from. We oh, call this a uh, scoop to a uh, scoop to game two. That was pretty brutal, but we do have a game two. I remember when uh, Yugi Mation wanted to start a series called Double Scoop Sundays. And the logo was going to be like ice cream. Oh, uh, there, there's another funny term for uh, two scoops, and that was uh, used to. Uh, we would tease somebody who would used to get their opponents to scoop for their invites back in the day, mm -hmm. and we call him Team Raisin Brand Two Scoops because he, <laughs> he was getting Brand. he was getting his opponents to uh, scoop for him to get his top. So we would just <laughs> say Team Raisin Brand. Not going to call out a specific name, but ooh, you know who you are. That's really funny. So. Dip it into the sideboard a bit here, just, you know, since this, this match isn't too long. So, um, I don't really know. Like, if you're going against Fluffles, what exactly do you really want to side against them? I mean, like, I like the Godarlo, but that's, it's, it's just too late to already summon it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, by the time you could summon Godarlo, like, you die. So, <laughs> the, crow's, the Crow isn't terrible. Yeah, Crow's pretty good for being able to stop some of the plays, like, with wings and stuff, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's about all I saw that he had access to, but it looks like he didn't actually touch much there. Yeah, so, I mean, now we're just waiting on Heisenwolf here. This is, I mean, I was really, I wish I could ask Dave, like, what he was, like, thinking going into this. Like, if he had some, like, really crazy idea for, like, why he wanted to play this, I would just really like to know. Or he's just, like, screwing up. both wind monsters! <laughs> 
That could be it. And I can use Divine Wind of Mist Valley, my oh, one no. copy. Oh, no. Oh, somebody sent in earlier today a way to search raw sphere mode with uh, metal foes. It was that mound burial. Oh, you mound of the metal. battle creator. Yeah, yeah, that one. You you pop it with a metal phone, you get to search. Oh, sphere. my God. I mean, that's uh, creative. I'll give them that. Yeah, and you get the plus, quote unquote, but it's just too many resources. Yeah. I guess if you're detecting some kind of field spell and metal those. If you're like teching diagram, maybe? Like, I don't know. That still seems like way too much. Well, there was one that played uh, Necro Valley in the main that topped. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, Necro Valley is a really good card, so I mean, I could, I, that's justified. I have to give him respect for ch opting second. So he shows the matchup knowledge here. He's like, yes, I don't want to get OTK. That's what your deck does. I'm going to choose to go second, even though I wish to set up with things like Crystal Wing, yeah. because you're likely to just get through it. So let's do this. And uh, it seems, oh, and his opponent oh. reveals that he's like I choose. Yeah. So even with the well set up Crystal Wing, it's, it's not going to be uh, able to live past a single turn yeah and we see norton coming down because norton's still legal for this tournament because by the time it wraps up that uh that june 12th ban list will probably be in effect by then and dave with that four copies of hunting ground in his hand is looking pretty good right now <laughs> oh, bomb at. oh yeah so now he's got to deal with totally awesome this is uh this is gonna be a bit rough toad I mean seems to be good and every single deck that can play two level four waters it's really unfortunate that uh Gra harpy's hunting ground only gives 200 attack like that seems so meager <laughs> he could actually play the hunting ground and normal summon the queen here though right he he could, wants. yeah but that's only going to be on 21 so that's the issue <laughs> Because the the Carpy Queen's on 19 by base. Uh, I thought she was, like, 21, like, the... There's some of them that are 21. Yeah, some of them are 21, but, like, I think those are the ones that require, like, the field spell to already be on the field or something. Yeah. Yeah, like, they have, like, some stupid stipulation like that. So Toad's gonna negate Ice Spell, which is understandably so. And, um... He's gonna trigger the Toad here just to shuffle it back Send into it back. the extra. Yeah, which makes perfect sense. Um, but, I mean, the thing is, he does have Channeler, so... Maybe he can pull something off with that. Oh, he's going to search the Mist Valley. Okay. How unfortunate to start with two uh, field spells and a terraforming. I know. That's like the worst feeling. I mean, in this format, it's not terrible with all the back row. Like, if he was going up against, like, Satellers or something, he could be just picking off that back row with Hunting Ground. But hits the dead Twin Twister with the Channeler. And... Yeah, there were definitely some matchups that this would have been way more optimal against in control-based battles. Yeah, but he could possibly go into a rank 7 play here, I believe, with the Channeler, so that's not too bad. I mean, he got rid of all of Heisenwolf's uh, options currently. So this might not be, I mean, terrible. It just kind of depends. I mean, actually, no, it's really bad because Heisenwolf has the Slumber in Grave already. Yeah, he's already got an answer for literally any big monster that's going to be put on the field. Yeah, absolutely. So he's going to do shenanigans with the Dancer to get the extra summon. So now he's going to get the special sub. Ooh, okay, we got the uh, the tech barrier statue of the Stormwind. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. That's actually really good because it prevents Ooh, and the... Chidori here can take care of the face down, mm -hmm. which the... is his own card. Yeah. And then... It can also take care of the Bahamut. And then that means he's not going to be able to do anything with that. And Dog and won't be able to... Then he can't special summon. Nice! And then he can use Chidori to attack the Dog. So then his statue's protected. I guess the biggest thing here is if Heisenwolf just has one monster that's bigger than the statue, he can just attack. And then over the statue and then everything's just back online. I think that's the only fear. But I think... I think dave handled that really well yeah that was a pretty nice turn i like the tech statue of the storm winds too that's really cool <laughs> yeah it fits in perfectly it, it hinders anything that's not his own strategy mm -hmm. uh let's see if his All opponent right. plays Godarla. i was gonna say so heisenwolf going in with the search now it's gonna be give, grabbing one kaiju he just needs one card here and he, and he has toy vendor let's not forget that as well Oh, he oh plays the there's Godarla. Godarla. Oh my God. I know there were a few formats where people actually had reasoning in their regional top profiles that were like, if I play barrier statues, this is the best kaiju. That's actually, I mean, it's a justifiable point. And Godarla also is, I believe, the third weakest kaiju. So if you're like trying to just play the three weakest, I mean, that's 
Godaro is not a terrible option. And he sends an edge imp to the graveyard. Yeah, this is, and has the fright perfusion. <laughs> Ooh, oh, sometimes you just have the perfect combination of cards. I mean, it all pretty much came off the fact that he had the Godarla. I mean, really, that's what set this whole thing off. But that's what his deck is meant to do. It's meant to get things to the graveyard. And uh, yep. he definitely prepared for this matchup, apparently. Yep. <laughs> he for the inadvertently players. prepared for his Harpy matchup that he knew he was going to face. <laughs> and there's Doggo. A.K.A. Stratos. Yeah, so he's got, I believe, game on board now. Is it? Let's see here. Oh, no, wait, no. He... That's... Yeah, Tiger doesn't get to attack multiple I'm times. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Wolf. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So. He gets Bear. Yeah, so he's Bear. Got... Bear's going to get uh, another Fright for a fusion. Oh, but can he just make Wolf here? Oh, no, he can't. Never mind. Yeah, there's. It's not gonna end this turn quite yeah, yet. But I mean, he's in a Heisen Wolf. Just, I mean, he's got board control at this point. To, da, to Dave's. As one long card. as there are cards in your deck and life points on your counter, and a card left to draw, <laughs> you have the hope of the heart of the cards. You have to believe in the Harpy's Feather Store. <laughs> oh no. Well, so he's going to do as much damage as he can, take care of a body on board, and be able to get the I mean, the end those cheap one-for-ones, but, I mean... <laughs> oh, man. You know, John, that would have been a lot more epic if he actually pulled something that was an amazing card off the top. Yeah, we, we were trying. We were, we we were trying were to channel. We were decking the Harpy's Feather Store. <laughs> I, I enjoy watching some anime duels once in a while. I mean, he gets to use the Harpy's Feather Store, so... Yeah? I, I mean, I guess... I don't know. <laughs> he still has life points left on his counter. Cards <laughs> left in his deck. You and a draw. never give up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. I mean, he's going to get the draw, too, now with the fluffle wings. So yeah, He's going to start really popping off. Oh, yeah. no. Oh. I guess. Oh. Okay. I mean, Hysteric Sign's nice. It's, it's a little bit late, but... If you would have had Hysteric Sign in his opening hand instead of four tar uh, hunting grounds, that might have actually been really good. Please deal with this card. <laughs> Please do something to it. Fear it. One Don't the, just attack. One there of the best be bluffs. Board. So Heisenwolf uh, top decking the Penguin, and it looks like that's going to be it. And Heisenwolf is going to advance to the top eight, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next match. Let's see, let's see.